When this deal was made and when you started hearing more or seeing the progress of Willie Calhoun or you knew what his prospect rating was and everything, did you think he was going to, I don't know if make an impact is too strong of a statement, but did you think he would get a good run here with the Rangers? Yes and no. It was tough after seeing him early in his Rangers career going, where in the world do you play this guy? Okay. Defensively. Okay. And so sometimes when you are that limited defensively, it's tough to get as much opportunity as you'd like. Now, in a very different way, Nick Solak runs into that category too because there's not really a position for him. And like as much as we'd like to say, oh, the Rangers or Major League Baseball, you know, defense isn't as important as it used to be or this and that. Sometimes though, when you you better hit a lot and hit great if you really don't have a defensive position in Major League Baseball. He he really embraced that logic, though. Because my position is cleanup hitter or number four or whatever, you know, whatever it was. And so he seemed to embrace that, but it just... You have to hit way better than he hit. Do you think that was always going to be the case? Because I know injuries caught him a couple of times, but do you think like when you saw him in extended runs, because you did still get, I, I thought, in, I thought the second half of 2019, I thought he's developing into an everyday player. You're going to have to DH him quite a bit still, but he looks like he can, you can put him in left field and he won't kill you. Yeah. But he still isn't going to help you. You're going to you're going to deal with he's going to turn outs into singles and he's going to turn at times singles into extra base hits. But hopefully he's developed enough that he can make most of the routine plays for you. That'll be taken care of. And hey, if you're going to bat 280 plus with 30 homers and 100 RBIs, I'll live with putting you out in the outfield 80 to 100 games and then DHing you another 50 games and uh, living with the defensive results to have the offensive production. But after 2019 and then getting hit in the face, he never came close to looking like that player again. Was Do you think that – I'm trying to figure this out. Did they keep him around this long because they were trying to salvage what they had from the Udarvish trade? Yes. Like that's 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 a clear fact there? I've I've been in too many organizations to know this. Let's just say John Daniels was let go in 2000. He would have been gone. Yeah, because now nobody who who's Willie Calhoun. I didn't trade for him. I didn't draft him. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not part of my U Darvish deal. Like U Darvish wasn't when I was here. I didn't make that trade. These guys they don't count on my resume. Yeah, but because when you make a trade like that and you're going, man, I really need this or want this to work out, and you know, it just matters where you're at with the front office or the owner on how much you need and want in those trades to, for them to be successful is, yeah, you're, you're kind of dang it, man. I, I need this to work out. Well, you know, whether it's a high draft pick, I need one of those guys, like you need out. things <laughs> to work out usually as a general manager or president for you to have a long term job. And that trade of you Darvish was one of those where you were really hoping it's really early. I talked about it earlier that it looks more like a Joey Gallo trade than it looks like, what this U Darvish trade ended up turning out like, and he was a seventeenth round pick. It's not like he was a you know number oh. one overall pick, and he he was just a but guy. He was with their potential. number three overall prospect yes. when and, you traded? For him. And this is the part where I get a little sad because I know, like in retrospect, when you hear people talk about it, it was never going to happen. But the name that like we started to hear floating around was. Oh, maybe you're maybe you're gonna trade for Walker Bueller. He's like their top yeah. pitching prospect. And I was like, oh wow, for real? And then they're like, hey, we got Willie Calhoun. And I was like, oh, what happened to Walker Bueller? And then you found out like that was not really on the table. That was just speculation. Yeah. And then you see how good or how well Walker Bueller has done. And that made me a little sad. Too. And, and and you know, for Willie, I felt like this, and I had mentioned this quite a few times on the air, is he didn't seem to want to take a lot of responsibility. Yes. He was for very his public too with his lack stuff. of production. Mm-hmm. That's true. And he did, you know, and I, you know, the, the years run together, I'm sorry which year it was, but when he finally showed up to training or to spring training in great shape and he oh. 
went and lost the fat that he needed to lose. And I was like, okay, he's finally, cause to your point, he said, I'm a number three hole hitter. It's like, yeah, no, you're not. You, you know, there's a lot more for you to prove that you can be this out of shape, not be able to play defense in the major leagues and just show up the way you're showing up. You haven't proven that you can be that, you know? And my father told me this about, um, Cecil Fielder, Prince Fielder's dad. And he had the same coach. My dad had a coach that ended up having uh, Cecil Fielder as a coach, I believe, in the Blue Jays organization, because that's kind of where Cecil Fielder came up. And he said, you know, you can play with this weight if you want to, and everybody will kind of be like, all right, this is great, as long as you hit 40 home runs right. and, and do great. As soon as you stop hitting 40 home runs, you're just a fat ass. Mm -hmm. and, and, and everybody hates you because you're not showing up ready to play and it's like, you're not really doing anything different except your lack of production. You're like, hey, I was fat last year and hit 40 home runs. What does it matter? Like, well, it matters because if you're fat and not playing well, then why are you the person who gets to show up here out of shape and not? Re and, and it looks like you're not ready to go? And for Willie, he took that, that year seriously. I believe it was 2019 because then he had the unbelievable second half. I think he was really upset because he got... You guys might have been there that day in 2019 yes, we where he got sent down. Mm -hmm. And he was like, man, I did all these things. You told me to do all these things. I did all these things. And you're not going to reward me by just keeping me on the major league team. And he spent three hours sitting on a hill, like just contemplating yeah. what what his decisions were and what he was going to have to do. And I think it was Jace Tingler walked out there to sit down and like have a long conversation with him because he was he was in a funk, man, like mentally. You could see it on him. I. I remember that time and that conversation because he, like a lot of times, I mean, athletes do a gajillion interviews and I'm sure they can blow off all kinds of things. But the way he seemed genuinely like intrigued or excited by what we told him, it was like, hey, I just want to let you know, like the fans are actively rooting for you. Like he stopped, looked at us and he was like, are they really mm -hmm. like that, that? I thought that was a really cool moment because you know, like, I'm not saying he was distracted or anything, but in that moment, like, every bit of attention in the world he had was focused on us. And he goes, are they really? And we told him, yeah. And he's like, that's really cool to hear. And yeah. so, like, when you saw that level of investment with the fan base, you would hope it would turn out. And I just hoped it turned yeah. out because I'm a Rangers fan. He's a good guy, too. So he does deal with sometimes I wanted him to take more responsibility for his lack of production or for him getting sent down. And um, it just, it didn't work out here for him. It's going to be tough for it for him to work out in the major leagues because when you are limited as a defensive player, you have to, once again, I know I'm repeating myself, but you have to put up such, such tremendous numbers to be, like, and it doesn't have to be this extreme. You have to be Manny Ramirez. Mm -hmm. You have to be, I played with both of them, Manny and Mike Piazza. If you're going to really struggle at your position defensively, then it has to be like, well, that's fine. He's creating more runs than giving up.